So let's talk about running updates on deployments. What kind of uh, strategy uh, can I uh, use if I want to update an application? All right, method number one, you know, I'm, uh, so I'm Bob DevOps and I want to update my application and I like simple things. So the way I update my application is that I delete everything and I deploy the new version instead. Easy, simple, uh, but I have some downtime uh, in between the, the two operations. So at some point, my users are going to come and see me and like, hey, Bob, can you do something a little bit better? I'm like, okay, I have a better idea. What if I deployed the new version uh, and once the new version is ready, I switch uh, traffic to the new version. You know, I do this blue-green deployment that we talked about. Great. Now, the problem is that if this is a pretty big application, it means that I need to double the footprint when I do the update. So if this is a small application, it's probably not a big deal. However, if this is a really big application, for instance, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember the numbers, but um, there were some pretty good presentations by uh, Doctolib. They are uh, um, a French startup doing uh, medical bookings. You, know, you have a website and you can uh, book like doctor appointments. And they had to face like extreme uh, scaling challenges uh, during the COVID vaccination campaigns in France. Uh, because, you know, just like in almost every country everywhere, it was a little bit chaos to find uh, places to book a vaccination appointment. Uh, and in France, there were probably like the number one thing that folks were using to find uh, vaccination appointments. Uh, and I think it was like the, the night when the French president announced that they would put in, in place like the whole vaccination pass, etc., so that people had to get the vaccine in order to travel and do this and do that, etc. Uh, suddenly you had like literally tens of millions of people who went to that website to find a vaccination appointment. So you can imagine that from a scaling perspective, um, the SRE team had a really great evening, especially because they got like no heads up at all from the French authorities. So great times, uh, but what's really great about it is that they wrote a bunch of blog posts after to explain the process and what they did, etc. So that means that at that point, they had probably like literally thousands of pods running that, uh, so some of the API backends. So imagine when you have thousands of pods, maybe on hundreds, maybe thousands of nodes, and you need to have twice that capacity, but just for five minutes, you know, while you do your running update, that doesn't seem great. So what would be better would be to replace the pods one at a time, just like what we did with the daemon set uh, in the previous example. Now, if I have 1,000 pods, I'm thinking, hmm, if I'm doing them one by one, even if I handle signals properly, etc., if I have to wait like three, four, five, ten 10 seconds for each pod, that's still going to take a really long time. So can we do something a little bit better than that? Can we replace, I don't know, maybe we could batch them 10 by 10 or something like that? Good news, uh, Kubernetes does exactly that for us. Well, it's not 10 at a time. I'm going to explain uh, more how it works. Uh, and the way Kubernetes does that is by having multiple replica sets. So, um, and we're going to say like this is the this is the old version and this is the new version and imagine I have scaling sliders. So at the beginning I have the old version which is scaled to the max and I want to deploy the new version. So what Kubernetes will do is start scaling up the new version and at the same time scale down the old version like this. And at the end you get your new version up and running. Um, so the metaphor that comes to mind is that Kubernetes is like a DJ mixing two tracks. You know, you lower the volume on the old track when you increase the volume of the new track and that's how you make a really smooth transition between your two versions. Um, so that's exactly what happens. Uh, when we make a change to a deployment, 
the deployment controller detects that. It's like, ah, you made a change to, to this pod template, so now you have a new version, and we are going to do that um, rolling update. So scale up the new one, scale down the old one, um, and that's it. Okay, um, let's see an example. Uh, let's get rid of all that. And let's, okay, I, I want to watch, um, let's see, kubectl get, um, I want to see <clears throat> deployments, replica sets, pods for app equal worker. Okay, great. Uh, and while we are here, let's add dash o wide. Yeah, that, that will do. Uh, actually, hmm, that will do, but yeah, like this. Okay, so at the moment, <clears throat> I have these 10 worker pods. I have um, this replica set, so Docker Coins Worker V0.1. And what I'm gonna do, is that I'm going to update the image of uh, the walker. I'm going to use Docker Coins Walker V0.2. So I'm going to kubectl edit deployment, <clears throat> find the image, Docker Coins Walker V0.1, and I'm going to put 0.2, save and quit. And just before starting the rolling update, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen uh, because it's going to be pretty quick. So I think it's easier if you know what to expect. So what's going to happen is that we will have a new replica set, Walker V0.2, and it will start with two, three, five pods. It will take maybe 10, 15 seconds, something like that for these new pods to, to, to be up and running. Um, the new pods are going to be at the beginning or at the end of the list. I don't know ahead of time if it will be the beginning or, or the end, but they will be all grouped together uh, because they will, they will have the, the, they will all start with the hash of the replica set. Um, and then when these pods will be up, then Kubernetes will continue the rolling update. So, you know, it's kind of like, okay, let's scale that up, wait until it's up, and only when it's up, we can continue the rolling update. <clears throat> so it's waiting for the pods to be up and running. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. So that's the new replica set. We are already at size five. You can see that they are in container creating state. And now each time that one of these comes up running, um, Kubernetes starts another pod and that's it. The running update is already over. We have 10 worker pods with the new version, version 0 0.2. And now Kubernetes is just shutting down the old pods. Again, it's going to take 30 seconds. <clears throat> and a little bit more. And that's it. <clears throat> now, if I go to my graph, well, that's some bad news. Um, <clears throat> it looks like we have a pretty big performance regression. Uh, on um, on that new Walker image. So what's going to happen is that I'm I'm going to call my development team and, and tell them, hey, I just deployed Docker Coins Walker v0.2, and look at that, uh, the graph went down by a lot. So what's going on? So my team is going to investigate, and they're going to tell me oh yeah, um, there is a problem with version 0.2. Uh, we forgot a bunch of print and debug statements, etc., in the code. Don't panic, we are going to release version 0.3 like right away. Like, okay, thanks folks. So I go back to my cluster uh, and <clears throat> I'm going to 
edit again. Uh, find version 0.2 here, put version 0.3, save and quit, and see what happens. So now I have replica set walker v0.3, except things don't seem to progress as expected. You can see that I have these five new pods here, so that's the pods for version 0.3. Uh, and we have uh, image pull back off and our image pool. Um, and you know that the, my, the, my running update doesn't seem to proceed. Uh, I have 550 here and 888. Like, what does that correspond to? What's going on exactly? Well, we're going to investigate, um, for instance, that pod. Let's do a kubectl describe. And when I do my kubectl describe, I have uh, not found. This might remind you something. Um, when, I, uh, when I deployed uh, Docker coins the other day, I deliberately made that mistake of uh, putting the wrong image tag. And we had exactly that problem because the tag did not exist. So what's happening here is that version 0.3 doesn't actually exist. I can't remember if I have regctl. Yes, I have regctl on that machine. So I can do something like tag list Docker coins walker. That shows me the tags available for Docker coins walker. And that shows me that there is v0.1, v0.2, and there is no v0.3. So I'm going to call back my dev team and tell them, hey, there is a problem. There is, I don't see version 0.3. Um, unfortunately, now it's the weekend and they're gone and they're not on call. So I need to figure out what's going on by myself. Okay, first, some good news. The app is not completely dead. You can see that I had a further like small drop in performance. I don't know if you can see it in the graph here. This is when I did the, um, the rolling update to version 0.3 and I have a small drop in performance because, because I only have eight pods instead of 10. Um, so what should we do? How do we fix this? Well, first, why don't we have version 0.3? Well, multiple possibilities. Uh, maybe they tried to ship version 0.3, but maybe there was something more important that came up and they didn't, they didn't have the time. Or maybe they uh, commit and pushed the code, but then it didn't pass a unit test or CICD or whatever. Or maybe my build pipeline is kaput and it's not, um, it's failing to build version 0.3. Maybe there is a problem on the registry itself. You know, there are so many possibilities why I wouldn't have version 0.3. But here we are, I don't have version 0.3 and I need to roll back. So what can I do? Um, the best option, would be to use you know, GitOps so that I have a history of my different revisions and I just check out the previous version uh, and kubectl apply. Um, here, I'm sorry, I was not very professional. I forgot to commit my changes. Uh, so I'll have to cheat a little bit to make that happen. Uh, so let's do git. Check out dockercoins.yml and I just need to put back the number of replicas. There we go. And now I do a kubectl apply. Whoops, okay. Uh, that did the trick, but we got a bunch of warnings. So I'm going to explain a little bit later why we had these warnings. Um, <clears throat> and this is taking us back to version 0.1 and my graph is coming back up. 